Hello there, this is Bibi Cameron. Welcome to a new video. Today, I'm participating in an Alte New video hop, and I'm going to be making these four cards. They are super easy, super simple, and I'm just going to be using two stencil panels to create these four projects. I just want to show you how to use the stencils and how that coordinates with the stamps and how easy it is to put together something using those supplies. Today I'm going to be using bouquet of poppies die set, layering stencils and a stamp set. As you can see here, the stamp set is huge. It includes a massive floral cluster that measures about eight inches and a half from the top to the bottom and from side to side is about seven inches and it has about 19 individual sentiments. So you can create cards for many different occasions. The stamp set and the die set has also numbers and also have letters. And this will allow you to identify which stencil goes with different images in the stamp set. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is to stamp this, the images. I'm going to be using the Misty and also Versafine Clear Nocturne Ink. And this piece of cardstock measures six inches and a half by eight inches and a half. I'm just going to place the stamp like so, and I'm going to apply ink on the stamp. So I make sure that my stamp is perfectly covered with ink, and my aim is to stamp this in one go. I really like the soft lines of stamping these ones. If I need to stamp it twice, I have that option because this platform allow me to do that. So I apply even pressure like that and also horizontally. And we do like CPR on this stamp. One boogie boogie, two boogie boogies, three boogie boogies. And the way I lift the lid, the lid of the platform, I kind of lift it from the edge bending a little bit, and that's the way I lift it. That helped me to avoid moving too much the paper inside the platform. Some leaves here are not properly stamped. I could leave it like that, it's really not a problem, but I'm going to add a little bit more of ink, and I'm going to stamp them again. Then again, I grab, see, I grab my, the lid of the platform, almost bending it upwards to lift it up. And the stamp it is done. I also want to stamp the other images because I want to show you how to do the stenciling in all the images in this set. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper here. I have a little bit of adhesive there, making sure that this is the front of the paper and I'm going to do that stamping as well. For that, I want to show you how I clean my stamps, and I just use a stamp chamois. I think this is a uh, uh, lawn farm, I think. I have two of them. They are very old, and look at that. <laughs> they look terrible. But then I pass one, and then I pass the oil one that is a little bit cleaner, and that helped me to clean my stamps just to be able to put them again in the stamp set. This stamp set is so big, it's so gorgeous. So there you go. So now I want to stamp all these little images here in this set. And we're going to stamp using the same in color. Another thing, while I'm doing this, I'm allowing to dry that. It's very important to allow the ink to dry before doing the stenciling. Okay, so we have to add ink or colors to these images. And when I'm doing a stenciling, I like to use a gel press or a jelly plate to 
hold the stencils in place. So I'm grabbing the stencil number one and it has also a letter A. I really don't follow instructions. I just look at the stencil and I see that this top image here aligns with that top flower there. And if I just place it over the image, I can see the logic of the stencil right away. You see that? And then we just need to make sure that this is aligned. And I help myself to keep the stencil in place by sticking it to the gel press. Because it's so little here and so little here, this is not enough to hold the stencil in place. So it's very important to help ourselves and use a little bit of tape. So I'm just going to tape that. Altenew is also releasing new in colors, yellow, violet, and green. And one of the tips I want to share with you today is to start using the stencil number one with the lighter ink color. Because this is the flowers, I'm not going to be using the greens. I'm going to be using the new yellow and purple colors. And you can see that there are four new ink colors for each shade. And I'm going to start by applying the lightest yellow ink color. And I'm going to be using a brush that I have been using to apply yellow ink colors just in circular motion, like so. Okay, we finished using this ink and we are going to use maybe the darker ink here just to add some detail to this image. This is completely optional and I'm going to be using these mini blending brushes to do that. And the way I'm going to apply the ink is from the center of the stencil towards the edges. But like if I'm doing this like so, in this area here, I'm going to that edge, and this one, I'm going to the bottom. And the way I'm applying the ink is from the center to the edges. Then, I'm going to put this ink back there to the cube. We finish the stencil number one, and we can put it away. Okay, now we bring the stencil number two. This one, you can see also that the stencil has this image. It will allow you also to see that embossed image on the stencil. So it's not like you don't know what to do with it. You can't see, okay, I have a branch here and this might be the same top image. You can align everything easily by aligning also the embossed image of the stencil with the stamped image. I think that's okay. So I just add it there and I make sure that using a little bit of this tape here and maybe also here at the top to keep everything in place. Now I'm going to use this ink, it's the second yellow ink in there. And we are going to apply this ink like so. Here is when I'm going to get a little bit crazy with the inks. And I'm not using this color anymore. I'm going to be using a purple ink. And in this case, I'm going to use Wisteria because it's the first color in there. However, what is important to know is that I'm using the main ink that I'm using is from light to dark, and I can bring dark shades just to add accents to that image. However, the stencil might add those accents, so we don't need to do that, but this is my thing. I do it. That's the way you see all those contrasting colors in the end result. So I'm going to grab again one of these mini blending brushes and I'm going to add hint of ink 
from the center of the image towards the edges and it will look like dirty in color there like it's some something getting dirty because when you blend purple with yellow you tend to get a brownish ink color or a color so that's the way you make brown basically you can also come with a strongest ink color like a, one of these purples you can also do that and getting something super striking it's a matter of you know relax and don't think too much this has been used just put it away i kind of want to bring this super strong color just a hint of it just a hint okay and see what happened here can i see that color so you can see just there how we are adding contrast of on those petals with those inks i'm going to remove the stencil so you can see a lot better right okay stencil number three you can see right there there is an embossed image you can see right there that this is the way you align it the gel plate if you have it good if you don't have it don't worry it's really for this image is irrelevant you can just use it to hold the paper while you adhere the same tape and for this i'm going to go full purple so i'm going to use this hydrangea color you can see the color here that i'm using and i'm grabbing one of these mini blending brushes circular motion really quick another thing if you want to achieve light shades of color you just ink the brush very little and if you want a really strong color why don't you put more ink and that's the stencil number three or the step number three done this one we just use it put it put it in the pile of the used inks we still have these four colors here to play with we might use them we might not use them so it's just to see how i use from light to dark the colors right but it seems i'm not going to use them any longer because now we have the lips <laughs> so this is the stencil number four and i can see that the three flowers are here see that you see them um and you have the centers as well so we align those centers the best we can i'm not going to make, try to make anything perfect mm, there you go i want you to pay attention because in here you are very close to the edge and i don't want you to get ink over that area there because we are going to make a car with this panel so we don't want any ink where we don't want it right then we're going to bring our green inks again we put the colors from light to dark and we can start with any of these colors okay i'm going to start with the lighters because it's what i do always is and have it i do it always if you want you can also add accents here with the very dark ink and i'm going to do it because i I'm everything about contrast. So I'm going to use the darker ink in this set here. And I'm going, oh, and oh, I want a mini blending brush, but I don't have more of the, the these ones. I only have two. I'm going to wipe this purple color. And I'm going to use the green. Just, just a hint of that color doesn't have to be a, a lot and you know what i don't want to add a lot because this has a layer in stencil or a layer in image and i can just cover that because this ink is super dark i don't want to cover that color okay just a little bit just a hint oh and this has also the centers i'm sorry i almost forget them then i'm going to use just whatever ink I have left in the brush to add color 
to those uh, little areas there. So there you go. Right? Then I'm going to use the stencil number five. And if you see this stencil, it has one line here, another one here, and another one here. This means that these individual images have to be stenciled apart. They are for different parts of the image. Easy to identify this one is this little leaf that is here. I haven't been touched. I'm just put that there. I'm going to add ink. Done. These other two leaves here. One goes here. Okay, we're going to align that. And we can just stick this here. And I'm going to use the second color. This one, we just use it. It's, we just need, need it to be gone. We're going to use this one. The impact is new and it's very juicy. And we align this other one here. And this is done. This is done. I just wanted to move it quicker because I don't want any ink to seep underneath, underneath and get the image ink. So we already used this color. We don't need it anymore. We put it in that pile. I cleaned the stencil, the top of the stencil is done. Now we're going to do this area here. And I will assume this is the top of the image. It's always kind of the top of the image. So let me see. You can see there straight away that it will kind of line up with the top of the image. And this is the last stencil that we will be using with this image. So we can use the darker in color. You can even use the darker green or the darker purple. Something that happens to me is that I cannot talk and, and align these stencils at the same time. I need to focus, like concentrate. Okay, so I have this in colors left and I have the last layer of the stencil. My imagination is telling me to grab this one. Of course, I can grab the super dark, green but i'm going to use this one to see what happens and i'm going to use this big brush to add the ink to the lips done okay i still need to keep this one for the other leaves let's see how this look so it's like all the shadows in the leaves you can use the dark green but honestly when you use contrasting colors like this the results are always more eye-catching and we go with the stencil number six so because we have the top of the image tone i will assume this is for the bottom and you have three flowers here some three flowers i can imagine that so we have to move the stencil to line it up with those images. And we are doing here the lips, the center of the images. Don't breathe, just pay attention to this so you get it done properly. Right? Looks properly done. And then again, we are going to use this one. Another thing is important to tell you that you don't need to do all the steps. If you just, you can stop whatever you want to stop regarding the stencils. I really like to use these stencils. It's like a, a new hobby because they are so easy to use and the results are so eye-catching that, you know, you don't need to be an expert and to do any coloring with these tools. And this is done. 
you will see that there are some also some the holes here and i did i decided not to use any more ink because i already applied yellow ink there you could if you want you could add something more stronger but i really kind of i'm happy with that color like you know why i will want to use something stronger there just like it could be brownish it could be black it could be another color i'm happy with that one and that's it this this stencil doesn't add any detail to the flowers so you can come back if you want and i'm going to add some striking color here and i'm going to use the number seven of these brushes again from the center to the outside and this is ultra violet right um i'm not english speaker so i struggle to keep telling the names of the inks so just trying to do my best here so to remove this from the gel plate i just lift it up and it removes quite easily so there you go and i also made this other one here and you can see side by side how the way i apply the ink make this image to look bigger but you know it's the same size for this one instead of starting to use yellow colors i use all the lilac or purple inks and i just added a hint of yellow in some of the petals that was it so it was the opposite process from this one and i also added shadows with dark green ink and it makes a huge difference visually regardless of that same size we are going to use this for a project and then we also have this image here and in the stencil pack you have two extra stencils and they have these lines that means that each of these images goes with a different uh, stamp image Okay, so then last step is to use the coordinating die set to cut these images. So there you have all the die cuts uh, that I made as well. Now to make the cards, I'm simply going to grab this panel and I'm going to just cut it in half. So we are going to cut it at four and a quarter. I'm going to make sure that is this is five and a half. Just to make one panel. And this one too. I don't want this. I don't want to cut the flowers. I don't want to cut the flowers. I just want to make sure that I keep the most of the flowers. Actually, I really like this. Like if you are going to create like a composition, a different composition. And if you have this one in front, you will be able to make a fruit, a complete fruit with this. Uh, just just wanted to show you that option. That if you are making, a, um, if you have a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, you can make an, a grid, like an oval grid, and it will be absolutely gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay, so these are the first two cards that I made. And I also made this other two just, uh, you cannot see how the panel was. I think it was like this. And then I just cut it and I create two different cards, mini slim line and a slim line of a similar format. You can make them in any size. These are just samples. And well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel or visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. The supply list to make these cards is in the video description just below this video. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.